Welcome back. Today's lesson is about two-step equations with rational numbers, meaning there could be fractions or decimals. So this is similar to our two-step equation lesson prior, except now we're going to have just a little bit um, higher level of numbers, I guess you could say, more complex numbers than just integers or whole numbers to work with. So let's go ahead and review our integer operation rules. Uh, before we begin the actual two-step solving equations lesson. So remember when we had integer operations, if we added two integers together, if the two values have the same sign, then the answer would be like adding and using the same sign. So for instance, um, you had 6 plus 5, which would come out to 11 and a negative 6 plus a negative 5 will come out to a negative 11. All right, if you're adding and the signs are different, however, then it's like a subtraction problem, and then you just take the sign of the number with the greatest absolute value. So, for instance, you have 6 plus negative 5. It's like taking 6 minus 5, which is a 1, and then I just look who has the greatest absolute value, the positive number, the 6. So I have a positive answer. And if I had negative 6 plus positive 5, I would subtract. 6 minus 5 is 1. But now in this case, it's a negative 1 as your answer because um, the number with the greatest absolute value was a negative. So the negative wins a sign. All right, now with subtraction, subtraction problems with integers. Remember how we did keep change change, which is adding of the opposite. So we're going to rewrite the problem to add the opposite. And then you just follow the rules for adding integers that we stated just above. So I could make 6 minus 7 into 6 plus negative 7. And we subtract because the signs are different and the negatives win the sign. A negative 9 take away 11 is like adding negative 11. A negative plus a negative stays negative, and it's negative 20. A negative 3 take away a negative 8. Remember those parentheses separators just subtract, um, separate the subtraction from the negative. So you can just drop those parentheses if it's confusing to you. Negative 3 take away negative 8 is like adding of a positive 8. So it's like negative 3 plus positive 8. Well, I find the difference, which is 5. And I look back, and the 8 um, was the number with the greatest absolute value. So it was a positive. So my answer is a positive 5. All right, how about multiplying and dividing? Do you remember the rules with integers for that? If the signs were the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. So 6 times 5 is positive 30, whereas negative 6 times negative 5, also positive 30. The signs match, matching socks, matching signs, positive answer. But if one is negative, one is positive, it's like our mismatch socks kind of idea, the answer comes out negative. So 6 times negative 5 is a negative 30. All right, let's do a little bit of quick review here, reviewing with our integer rules. Um, and we're, we're going to use this for applying to our equations next. But let's go ahead and maybe you can stop the video and come back on and see if you got the right answers at this point, just as a way of extra skills practice. So pause the video and come on back. Welcome back. Did you get the following answers? Negative 6 plus negative 19, negative 25. A negative 5 take away 32. It's like adding more negatives. So it's a negative plus more negatives is negative 37. 14 plus negative 27 looks like the negatives will win. And we subtract because the signs are different. So we get negative 13. Negative 11 take away 8 more is like adding more negatives. Negative 19. And then in the bottom row I see multiplication 
negative 8 times negative 9 is a positive, matching signs. Whereas negative 14 times 3 is going to be negative because you have mismatched signs for negative 42. Uh, 24 divided by 4, we know that's 6, but what about a negative divided by positive? It's a negative 6. And the last one says negative 35 divided by negative 7. A negative divided by negative, matching socks, positive answer. 35 divided by 7 is 5. All right, hopefully you're getting better and better with those integer rules as a refresh. Now, our steps to solve two-step equations, and you can go back to the graphic organizer, and it's really the last few steps from um, our, our lesson where we introduce the graphic organizer. It gets a little more complicated um, with possibly having to do the distributive property, combining like terms, but once you do, do those two steps and everything is, all the variables are on one side of the equal sign, you're ready to use inverse operations to undo addition and subtraction. In the second step, we use inverse operations to undo the multiplication and division. And then you should be able to solve and isolate the variable. Always along the way, show your work and keep the equation balanced to show that you're doing the same on the left of the equal sign and the right. And then you can always check your answer by substituting it back into the original equation and seeing if it comes out to be a true statement. So let's go ahead and actually do and solve the following two-step equations. You might need to change your notes. Um, I think the directions said um, two-step equations. We want to follow one, uh, I'm sorry, it said one step. You want to change that to two step equations and draw algebra tiles if needed and then check your work. Now notice how it has a graph over here. When we graph the solution most of the time for solving of equations the solution comes out to x equals and then a number and then you would just make a number nine line and just graph that as a solid dot on that number. So it's nothing complicated with our graphing but it does help to understand that that's when we get to inequalities, it's going to be a little bit um, added on to just graphing a solid dot. But with graphing of equations, it's really just graphing that one particular number and showing it as a solid dot. All right, so um, if you feel that you're comfortable with this, you can always pause the video and join back in and see if you get the answers that we get here. So I see negative 4 times k plus 9 equals 32. So I draw my wall. I'm showing my work. I'm taking away because I want to do the inverse of whatever the constant number is. The plus 9, I have to subtract 9 and zero that 9 out and bring it to the other side of the wall with an inverse operation. 32 minus 9. And we will get 23. Bring down the negative 4 with the k and set it equal to 23. Divide both sides by negative 4. So, oops, there we go. A positive divided by negative is going to be negative something, and then maybe off to the side you can do your long division. 24 goes, I'm oh, sorry, 23 divided by 4. 4 goes into 23 five times, which is 20, and you've got 3 left over. So the answer is 5 and 3 fourths, or if you solve it out as decimals, it's 5.75, but it's negative because it was a positive divided by negative 4. So negative five and three fourths, or you can say k equals negative 5.75. And then what you could do is do your little number line off here, and let's see, negative six would be down below it, negative five would be maybe up here, and uh, negative 5.5 would be somewhere in the middle here. 
and negative 5.75 would be a little lower than that, so I would graph it as a solid dot on that number line. Okay, so again, the answer was negative 5.75 or negative 5 and 3 fourths. The next problem, number 2, I'm going to put that line, that wall through my equal sign to show I'm going to keep things balanced. I see a subtracting of 14. I'm going to add it to both sides. So move the constant term. And 20 plus 14 is going to be 34. And on the other side, I bring down my x divided by 2. So how do I eliminate dividing by 2? I multiply both sides of that wall by 2. And it comes out to x equals 34 times 2, which is 68. And where would I graph that? I would have a 67, 68, 69 on a number line, and I would make it a solid dot on the 68. And if you wanted to check your answer, because uh, it does say check and graph, which I didn't do in the last problem, but you could substitute for x. You put in the 68 in place of x. 68 divided by 2, take away 14, and see if it comes out to that 20. So you're kind of asking yourself, is it truly equal? 68 divided by 2 is 34 minus 14. Is that equal to 20? And sure, because 34 minus 14 is 20, so it does check. So you could be doing these checks if given the time. I would highly suggest that you check if you've got a reasonable answer by doing those steps to check. All right, let's do some more practice here. Numbers 3, 4, and 5, you may want to pause the video, see if you can solve these on your own, and then come on back. So if you're just returning after doing these on your own, um, I see 3 times x, 3 times some mystery number, plus 8 equals negative 10. Well, the last thing that happened on the side where x was is that we added 8. So I'm going to remove that first, so move the constant term by doing an inverse operation. Instead of plus, I subtract and zero it out. Bring down the 3x, bring the equal sign on the wall, and think of negative 10, take away negative 8. Read it from top to bottom. Negative 10 minus 8, which is like adding more negatives. Negative 10 plus negative 8 is negative 18. My last step is removing the coefficient, and since it was next door, it was multiplied, so to undo it, I divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 times x is x. And on the other side, negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. So did you get x equals negative 6 is your answer? Okay, the next one, number 4, we see a decimal number, negative 1.5x minus 9 equals 15. To find what x equals, we undo, we kind of unwrap the variable, isolate it, get it by itself, and negative 1.5x comes down. When we add that 9 to both sides, we're left with negative 1.5x equals, and the other side looks like 24, because 15 plus 9 is 24. All right, looks like we have to undo multiplying with dividing by negative 1.5 on both sides, divide by a negative. A negative divided by itself will make a 1. 1 times x is what's left, which is just x equals and then long division, 24 divided by negative 1.5. Don't forget, if the divisor's got a decimal, we move the decimal once to the right. And we also do that in the dividend. And add a zero there and bring up the decimal. 
So 15 goes into 24 once. 24 minus 15 is 9. Bring down a 0, and 15 goes into 90 six times. 6 times 15 is 90 exactly. So it looks like x equals 16, but then don't it's a negative 16. I apologize for the dog barking there. x equals negative 16. The last one, number 5. We've got something divided by 6 plus 7 will come out equal to negative 11. To find what that something is, inverse operation. Move the constant term first. Think of how, what's the opposite of adding 7? Subtracting 7. So on both sides of that wall, I'm subtracting 7. Wiping out the constant on the side where the variable is. Bringing down the leftover, x divided by 6. Equal sign always on the wall. Negative 11, take away 7 more, is like adding more negatives. So you see that comes out to negative 18. And then we multiply both sides by 6 because x was divided by 6. And the opposite of dividing by 6 is multiplying by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then negative 18 times 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Carry a 4. 6 times 1 plus 4 more is 10. And don't forget, a negative times a positive is a negative. So you should get a negative 108 as your final answer. So that, again, was x equals negative 108. Hopefully you're doing okay. You can always replay if things are going along too quickly for you and listen once again. But if you're good, let's try 7, 8, and 9. All right, so 2 thirds of some number plus 20 comes out equal to 30. Let's go ahead and unravel this. Use inverse operations, take away the constant, wipe it out and make a zero by adding and subtracting it from itself. So it was a plus 20, we take away 20 to make a zero. Bring down our 2 thirds with our x. That's left over, and then 30 minus 20 on the other side is 10. And you may recall that to um, the fastest way to undo multiplying a fraction, when you see multiplying with a fraction, is to divide by a fraction. And in that case, we do keep change flip. So it's really like multiplying by the flip, multiply by the reciprocal to wipe out the 2 thirds because three, three halves and two thirds equals one. Six over six, which equals one. So it basically cancels out and you're left with a one. And one x equals 10. We also have to do 10 times the three halves. So what is 10 over one times three over two? It's 30 over two. And 30 divided by 2 is 15. So you should get x equals 15. So if I just reveal the answer here. Yep. Oh, negative 15. Okay. So one thing I didn't see, and I apologize for that, I think there was supposed to be a negative sign right in front of that 2 thirds. So let me just show that work again. Take away 20 from both sides does come out to 10. We had negative 2 thirds x left over. And then we multiply by negative 3 halves. And so a negative 3 halves over here. These two cancel. And you're left with x equals 10 over 1 times negative 3 over 2. Yep, it should be a negative sign. Okay. Well, I guess with the printing, that negative two-thirds didn't come out very clear. All right, and number seven. We've got minus seven from both sides. Take away that constant, 
It was adding now. We subtract to zero it out. Bring down your negative 2 with your x equals negative 32 minus 7 is like adding more negatives. So it actually comes out equal to negative 39 over here. And then we divide by negative 2. And we get x equals hmm, 39 divided by 2. We're going to get a decimal answer. So it goes in, let's see, 19 times with one half left over. Okay, so a negative divided by negative is a positive 19.5 or 19 and a half. Under here you can see 19.5 or 19 and a half. Number eight. Okay, I see x divided by negative 2 take away 15 equals negative 35. The last thing that happened on the side where x was that, was that 15 was subtracted. So that's the first thing I undo. I move my constant terms with an inverse operation to the other side. And I have a minus 15 plus 15 wipes out, makes a 0. No effect. And I'm left with x divided by negative 2 equals negative 35 plus 15 is 20. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2 because I saw dividing by negative 2, so I have to undo that. And I get x equals 20 times negative 2, which is negative 40. So just to check, if you wanted to do a check for a problem, and I'm just going to use number 8 here as an example, you could take that original equation where it was x over negative 2. So if I think I got a good answer and said, oh, my answer is negative 40. I'm going to try that divided by negative 2, then take away 15, and see if it comes out equal, so question mark, equal negative 35. Well, let's see. We've got hmm. Oh, no, see, I did make a mistake. Do you notice that this is not going to come out true because this comes out to 20 minus 15 is not 35? So guess what? Doing the check could save you and catch a wrong answer. Let's go through again and see if we can get to the right answer here. So sometimes I just wanted to show you it does really help to make sure that you're doing the right steps and to do the check when you have that time. So, okay, well, we did add 15 to both sides to begin with. And I got, I thought I got negative 20 over here, but maybe I, hmm, what did I do wrong? Well, it, yeah, it wasn't a positive 20. Negative 15 plus, I'm sorry, negative 35 plus 15 is negative 20. So then bring down the x divided by negative 2. Multiply both sides by negative 2. All right, so it was pretty early on I actually made that mistake and brought down a 20 instead of a negative 20. So negative 20 times negative 2 is a positive 40. Now let's do the check. Let's substitute in place of x. Let's substitute 40 divided by negative 2. Take away 15. And now see, does that come out to negative 35? Well, 40 divided by negative 2 is negative 20 minus 15. Is that equal to negative 35? Well, it's like adding more negatives, and so taking away 15 more, it's like adding 15 more negatives, which is negative 35. And yes, it does equal negative 35. So now I do have a good answer. I found that x equals 40, and that does work. So number 8, x equals 40 is a true or good answer.
All right, moving on to number nine. If, if you hear any crunching sounds, it's not my family members eating right now. It's actually my dog. She's a pretty loud chewer. So if you hear a little crunching noise in the background, it's not me. It's not my family. It's our dog, Charlie. All right, number nine. Margot solves several equations and then states that all of them have a solution of negative seven. However, Kenneth disagrees. Determine who is correct and justify your answer. So pause the video for a moment and try out solving these and come on back once you find what the solution should be. Well, it winds up that Kenneth is correct. They don't all have a solution of x equals negative 7. Only the third card, the number letter C, comes out to negative 7. And in number 10, we have a word problem where it says David's phone bill each month is $30. And he is also charged 10 cents per gigabyte of data he uses. If his phone bill in July was $42, how many gigabytes of data did he use in July? So the first thing you do when you see a word problem is look at the question. And the question was how many gigabytes of data did he use in July? So we have to then say... Um, define the variable, and I will say let x equals equal the number of gigabytes. So let x equal the number of gigabytes. Well, in this um, word problem, um, I can see that the total charge was $42. So that sounds like a number that would happen after the equal sign. He's charged, he gets a bill of 30 and also charge 10 cents per gigabyte. So his monthly charge is 30, so that's a set amount. So the equation has that set value that he's always gonna pay every month. Also, or and, or plus, 10 cents per gigabyte of data. So 10 cents every gigabyte of data. That piece, remember the x was our gigabytes of data, we don't know what it is. This piece together goes right here with the 10 cents times the gigabytes of data. That, when we multiply together, if we know what gigabytes he used, we could get the cost of the gigabytes. And the $30 bill that happens every month together makes that $42. So the equation that we develop is 30 plus 0.10x equals 42. Now, if you had to solve that equation, what you could do, again, is make your wall. I would take away the 30 from both sides. So 30 minus 30 makes a 0. I would bring down the 0.10x on the left. 42 take away the 30 was 12. And I would divide by the 0.10 on both sides of the wall. So guess what answer we get when we solve for x? We get x equals 120 gigabytes. All right, on number 11 it says to write and solve the equation model below. I see two x's and four ones. So that looks like 2x plus 4. The balance means equal. And then if you count up all the ones on the right side, you see 10 of them. So 2 times something plus 4 equals 10. And if you solve that out, you should get x equals 3. How do we get x equals 3? We take away 4. 10 minus 4 is 8. Bring down your 2x's. 2 times something is 8. Divide by 2. Oh, geez, 10 minus 4 is not 8, it's 6. I think I've been taping too long here. 6 divided by 2 is 3. All right, so x equals 3. My apologies. Even teachers can make mistakes. Okay, and something like number 12 might come about where we talk about angle measures. Um, as we get into another part of our unit with angle measures and how we can use algebra for that, 
Um, so the sum of the measures of angle Y and angle Z is 180. Sum means we're going to add, something to do with addition. Um, angle Y measures 3X plus 20 and angle Z measures X. So if we wrote an equation and solve, I would take the 3X plus 20 and the X for angle Z. So um, this first part of our equation is angle Y and add angle Z, set it equal to 180. So if I solved for X, I'd have to probably combine these like terms first. So I get 4X plus 20 equals 180. So notice how I combine like terms and then I can do my inverse operations. Take away 20 from 180 is 160 divide by 4 and you get 40. But what would the, each angle measure? If they asked you what each angle measures, you substitute the 40 in place of the X. So angle Z, angle Z was 40 itself and angle Y was 140 and together they added to 880 degrees. And that's our lesson for today. A little bit more lengthy, but hopefully we had enough practice problems to kind of help us along our way. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.